on academy today we are going to discuss one of the very interesting and very demanding uh, topics that is aws lambda it's also called server based function so before going deep inside let us discuss one use case one problem statement suppose you have some problem statement when you upload a file or data or any image on s3 bucket then you have to trigger some data engineering computation work like you have to add some data or you have to delete some data on top of that you have to generate the report and that report should go to the another s3 bucket how to do that you have the two option one option simple you create an instance of the ec2 that is working 24 by 7 whenever this request will come it will execute the code generate the report and put into the s3 but problem is that this job is just for the 10 minutes or this job is just for the two minutes and for the two minutes job why you want to set up one 24 by 7 instance you have to pay the money for the dedicated ec2 for the 24 by 7 but your job might be just need 10 minute works or full day including all the request you might get it on two hours job so for the two hour jobs why you want to pay the money for 24 by 7 in this situation you have to create the instance you have to monitor the server you have to provision these instances so something i am thinking why you cannot have something that execute the code when we get the data in the s3 and just finish it and i should pay only that much time just for two minutes or five minutes by that time my report is being generated we have to pay only that much time of the execution cost not the full dedicated ec2 cost and that something is called the amazon lambda that is called the aws lambda server based function why it is called the server based function because you are not going to instance any server you have to just provide the code base that's it whenever those functions will be triggering that time aws we provision some servers according to the request and then it will do the work done but you no need to do anything so if you see the actual definition of the aws lambda it is the event driven server based computing platform means you put the code and set one event when that event will trigger your code automatically will be executed and you run your code will be run without provisioning any server that's why it is called the server based computing an interesting part is that you have to pay the money only the compute time you consume that's it today's aws lambda support this much of the programming language python java go shisha.net node.js and the ob with the help of this language uh, you can define your code so what is the benefit first and foremost benefit is that you no need to maintain any server you no need to provision anything aws lambda automatically run your code without requiring any provision just you have to provide the code your focus would be on the code not on the instances right second benefit is the continuous scaling so AWS will take care automatic scale your application by running the code in response of the each trigger. You no need to worry at all. And third is a very economic uh, benefit that you have to pay on with the timing your code is being executed, not the 24 by 7. And fourth is that the consistent performance means you can set, you can configure how much memory you need, how much concurrency you need, that everything you can set yourself. Now, so how it works actually, this is the important thing. So it's easy, just you upload your code. There are the two ways. Either you develop your code in your local laptop and upload those code. Otherwise, you directly go to the Lambda and write your code is up to you once you're done with the code then you have to set up some trigger point that is called the source of event 
by which event your code will be triggering, your code will trigger. So these are the way today we have the in AWS by which you can trigger your code. So very common and the very uh, most of time we use the Amazon S3. Whenever S3 bucket will get some data, it will trigger the event and at the end it will execute your code, whatever the code you have written inside the AWS Lambda. Other way is that Amazon API, so when you create one website, and from the website, if anyone hit the API, that API will in turn execute your Python code. So these are the things we will see some example few of the source event, right? Next, some use case. So it is being used for the real time pipe processing. Take one scenario. When you take the photo and you put the photo in S3, then some function should be executed who can make the thumbnail or who can maximize, minimize or do some photo editing and finally they put the photo into the website. So this must continuous things you can do with the help of the use case. So first was the real time pipe processing, second time is the real time streaming processing. Nowadays a lot of data is moving through the streaming processing like your bank transactions, share market transactions, website clicking, your online transactions. Those transactions will be catched by the Amazon Kinesis and that will trigger the Lambda. Then Lambda will take those data, do some operation as per the business use case and dump into the Amazon DB, DynamoDB and that DynamoDB you can connect some dashboard or social media or any uh, platform as per your requirement you can do that. And one of the more interesting uh, use case you can create one very powerful static uh, web page with the help of the Lambda. So your static page would be on the S3. So suppose if you want to make one weather forecasting, weather information website. So make similar kind of static on the S3. When you click, I want to get the weather of a particular city, it will hit the Amazon API gateway. That in turn, they will hit one AWS Lambda. They will connect with the Amazon DB, DynamoDB, where all those informations would be there. They will take those information, return back to the API gateway, and they will be shown the website. Next, uh, very interesting thing, and most of the company nowadays, they are using the complete Lambda environment for their ETL purpose, extract, transformation, and the load. So here, if you see the AWS Lambda, we use the very extensively. So how the use case, once you get the log, that log from any medical device, any bank transactions or anything, their job is that they will put into the one S3 bucket. We normally used to call the vending zone. The moment the data will come in the vending zone, they will invoke one lambda function. And that lambda job is that just to do the data validation. After data validation, they will put it in the bucket and from here they will invoke another lambda depend upon the content of the data and then finally they will move in different bucket that is called the transformed S3 bucket. So use they use a different kind of bucket and from here they will inv invoke another lambda they put the data into the red shift and from there they can show into the dashboard. But with all those use cases some limitations we should also know about the AWS Lambda that maximum time for Lambda function is the 15 minutes. So your job should not be very big job that uh, be, go beyond the 15 minutes that you have to take care and maximum memory you can allocate uh, not more than the 3 GB or maximum concurrency is 1000 that we, uh, we will see in the demo. And for to set up the lambda, it will just take a two minutes time and this much code is sufficient what I am showing here in the right side. What you have to do? I am going to make one small use case. I will set two S3 bucket. One S3 bucket, we put the data in S3 bucket and that will hit the lambda function and through that lambda function, they will copy those content to the another S3 bucket. So this is my simple job here, okay. How to do that? First, you have to create one IMA role that have the S3 full and the Lambda uh, permissions of the and also the CloudWatch access. You should have full access. 
and then we create the bucket and write the method. Let us start our demo. Talk enough, now move to the AWS website. Here is the here. First go security identity, click on the IEM and create one role. So go to the role, create. We want to create for the lambda, right? To see, click on the lambda. This is the important steps. And then go to the next. We need the two things. One is the S3 full access. So this one again search the cloud watch. I will tell you wh why the cloud watch we need. Cloud watch full access. Next, review and give one name. So I'm just giving any name you can take as per the business you comment. I'm taking the uh, this name for demo purpose. We know demo role. That's it. This was the first step. Second step, go to the service, go to the S3 bucket and create the two bucket. One is the source, one is the destination. So create bucket, put the name, anything you can give. So I am putting the source. We have to create the two bucket. One is done, one more bucket. done second job done now go to the lambda yeah this is important so we come here lambda. you will get one button create function go here and for the first time we will choose the this option author from scratch you are going to from scratch give one name for the function so i'm just giving we know demo as i discussed it support this much of the language so we are going to take the python python 3.7 and the permission this is important part because to use the lambda we need the permission for the s3 and the cloud watch right so we have already created one role, so select use an existing one and name was the Binode demo role, right? This was the name we have given that. Choose it and create function. That's it. Now you will get one designer whether you can set the triggers. So what I'm going to do that when anything come in the S3, so I hit the button add trigger and on which trigger S3, go and select the S3, give the name, what is your source bucket name? So I can give the Binod source, right? No need to change anything, just add. Your job is finished. Now, once you, now you can see that what the permission you have set, all those things you can see here, what the permissions we have given, right? What is these all these things are there now we have done everything now we have to do the code right and see they have given the code place here so what you have to do for time being i'm just going and copy this code i will provide the code and just paste it so you no need to define what is the source bucket because we have already added in the trigger here right just you have to define the uh, uh, destination. So how you can get the source? We have this already, the method is there, lambda handler. We are getting the two parameter event in the context. Through the event, event is the big JSON. I will show you in the next video. And we can get what is the source as three. Okay. And what is the file name? Then you have to create one JSON. Means with the source and the file name, that's it. And this is the main method copy object and we have created one s3 client you have to invoke the copy object and in copy object we have to pass the source object means what is the source bucket and what is the file name and this is the bucket name is the destination bucket name so i have created one bucket below destination and the key means which file you are going to do that that's it you have to do and click on the save button 
So now once you click the save button, there are some options, environment variable that you will see in the next video, what is the tag. And here you can see all the basic settings. As I was talking that you cannot go more than the 3 GB. See, this is the 3 GB. So, and you cannot go the time out more than 15 minutes. See, if I go, it is saying the maximum 15 minutes are there. And what the rules we have said that. No, not going to do anything. Just go everything fine. Now the demo time. Go to the S3. Go to the source. Upload any file. Let me put any file. So any text file you can put anything. I upload now. So I put on the Binod source. If you see in this bucket, and you can see this file has came here, right? Now go to the Bino destination. I am expecting that file should be reached there also. Now if you see this file has already reached. Right? Now you go to the S3 uh, Lambda. I want to show something here. Here you can see uh, the monitoring tools, right? So monitoring tools is nothing. This is the, uh, and you can see here what is monitoring tools. So whatever the operations we have done in between, everything has been logged into the cloud watch. Either you can go from here or either you can go from the service. You have the option. So let me go from here. It will automatically open one cloud watch. And here you can see this is the group name and this is our Lambda name, right? So even if you go the log groups, it will show this is our Lambda name. If you go here, and that log has been generated, so it will show the log. If any problems might be in the code, everything you can get it here. Okay, so uh, this was the video, the ba very basic video on that. But in the next video, I will come up with many more examples and many more way uh, to use the lambda functions. Thank you very much. Please don't forget to subscribe to this channel. Thank you.